Hey everyone, Kyle Bascom here. Today we're going to be replacing all of the front suspension control arm links, uh, upper and lower control arms on our 2015 C300. The procedure that you see us go through today is applicable to just about all of the C300s, whether or not it's rear wheel drive or all wheel drive, with some slight tweaks depending on uh, what you're working on. And then also the procedure is applicable to uh, the E-Class W213 models. Um, those are sedans and wagons that were introduced in the 2017 model year. Our C300 is a higher mileage vehicle. It's got more than 100,000 miles on it. So what we're looking to do is freshen up the suspension, get the car feeling nice and tight again. In your case, if you're noticing excessive wear on your bushings or play on your ball joints, it's a good idea to replace those control arms, replace both sides at the same time. And similar to what we're doing today, consider replacing all of the links in your front suspension to restore the suspension feel. Now that you know what we'll be doing today, let's talk about the tools that we're gonna use to do the job. We have sockets in various sizes. Uh, we use the 19 millimeter, 21 millimeter, as well as 12 point sockets in the size of 21 millimeter and 24 millimeters. We needed to use external torque socket sizes E18 and E20. Um, we also used an E20 ratcheting wrench. For the socket sizes that I listed, we also used ratcheting wrenches. We had a 16 mil ratcheting wrench that we used as well, a 32 millimeter 12 point socket for the large ball joint. We have ratchets in various sizes with flexible heads. Um, we used a 3 8 drive ratchet as well as a half inch drive ratchet. Some of the bolts required significant torque and stretch torque procedures. So having a half inch drive breaker bar or something that allows you a lot of leverage is very important. We also had a half inch drive torque wrench. For lighting, um, we used our Astro set. We had two lights. This brass punch was very helpful with lining up some of the uh, holes before inserting the bolts. Uh, we do recommend as well a tape measure. This is going to allow you to measure the ride height of the vehicle to preload things before you torque any of the rubber bushings. So quite a lot in the way of tools here. Uh, the most important thing that I'd recommend is for the sizes where we mentioned we used a 12 point socket. That's the only thing that's going to fit on those fasteners. All right, now that you know the tools, let's get right into the job. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the tie rod. That will give me sufficient space to um, remove this tension strut right here. So I've got a, a 21 mil uh, 12 point uh, ratcheting wrench that I'm using here. And then looks like a 10 millimeter uh, counter hold for the ball joint if needed. So not much in the way of clearance, just doubled up on the wrenches for additional leverage. and uh, that was able to break it loose. Oh boy. And then I'm gonna, now that the joint is spinning, I'm gonna counter hold it. All right, so that's our nut. Once I've released my hand, that's just gonna kind of loosen right up. There we are. Okay. So just putting pressure in this direction um, allowed me to get that tie rod out. Uh, so this is a 24 millimeter 12 point and I'm just using this wrench for additional leverage. All right, so just tack the tie rod back in so that the steering will stop a little sooner. All right, gonna try to break this loose with the impact. So um, when you're retightening these, you definitely don't wanna use the impact or if you're gonna be reusing this arm, um, you don't wanna use the impact because the force and the speed at which it swivels uh, will damage the ball joint. So try to stay away, away from this as much as possible. Now that we've loosened the nuts for the lower control arm, I'm gonna go ahead and loosen the tie rod and remove it so that we have enough space uh, to remove our lower control arm. So I'm just checking to see if the joint is spinning uh, while I'm removing the nut. Looks like it's staying in place. If you did need to counter hold it, uh, that's a T45. All right, so this arm is all the way loose. Uh, very tight space to work between the stabilizer bar link and the axle. 
I'm going to remove the bolts over here. Should give me enough clearance to remove that control arm. Now I'm just uh, counter holding. This one's 21 mil and this is an E20. All right, this nut feels like it's the majority of the way out. So we have a nut, fairly substantial washer on the back side of it. Then at the front, we've got a long bolt and another washer. So now we've dropped it out of the body and that gave us enough room to just uh, wedge the control arm right out. So got our new um, OE control arm here. This one's made by Linforder. Uh, similar technique to how it came out. Just going to shove this end in first. Tack our nut in. Let that hang out. Then I'll send our uh, cross member, our body bolt in. Just trying to get things lined up as close as possible. There we are. Then I'm going into the other side um, with the washer and the nut. For this side, um, I am going to tighten things down, but I'll do the full torquing uh, for all of the arms at the end of the procedure. And again, just using a 21 and an E20 to tighten that up. There we are. I'm just coming back in um, with our 24, and I'm just going to continue to tighten that until I see the joint start to spin. I think it heard me because it's spinning now. So you have some thread lock on there, and it looks as if uh, once it hit the thread locker, that's enough torque to get the joint to start spinning. So I'm going to come in with the counter hold and continue tightening uh, with the wrench. For the ball joint side, unlike the bushing side, if you wanted to, uh, you could do your final torque right now. That wouldn't cause any uh, damage to that joint. But we won't be doing that. Now we're going to focus on getting our spring control arm off the vehicle. So what you'll notice is we've got some uh, sensor wires here for brake wear and for uh, wheel speed, um, and it's clipped in with this bracket. So we're gonna get all of that out of the way. I'm gonna pop that out, and then I am squeezing in and trying to push, pull the tab up so that I can get that out. There we are. So just to clarify, I'm pushing this tongue in and I'm pushing up on this tab and that allowed me to open that one. There we are. All right, so that's off. I'm not gonna take it entirely out unless I absolutely have to. We'll just leave things hanging for now. And then I am gonna also pop these wires out of the knuckle uh, just so they don't end up getting a glancing blow um, from the control arm when I try to remove the control arm. Next thing I'm gonna do is loosen the nut at the strut assembly. 21 millimeters, that's the size of the nut on this side. The head of this bolt is uh, 24 millimeters. So I'm gonna break it loose first and then counter hold. There we are. All right, so now our strut is no longer connected to our control arm. Uh, now we're gonna loosen the control arm up where it connects to the cross member. All right, so I have a 21 mil, I have a deep socket. That was needed, the shallow one just wasn't providing me uh, enough access. Got a universal joint uh, for impacts on here as well. Um, just be mindful of uh, the steering rack boot that you're gonna be rubbing up on. I've got an E20 to counter hold. Hope I've gotten that in the right position the first time, but we'll see. There we are.
Same as the other arm, got a nut and a large uh, washer. Now I'm just sliding this bolt out of this cavity. Yo, you're a We are gonna need to drop the sway bar just a little bit to get clearance for the bolt for our lower control arm. Uh, this is a 19 millimeter nut and I'm counter holding with a nine millimeter wrench. Ugh. Um, so all I did there, I don't want to keep holding my counter hold tool. So just rotate it around. It's going to stop on the body of the steering knuckle. Um, and that'll do what I needed to do to loosen this nut up. And then I can just focus on loosening the nut. You can see as it gets closer to the top, it's, gonna, it's just walking the tool up. Not the end of the world. All right. That's nice and loose. I'm just, just upward pressure. Just removing these two bolts and I'm going to kind of pull down on the sway bar and hopefully fish this bolt out. Not gonna, this one's not gonna like it because of the force of the head. So, um, just using a pry bar against the sway bar um, to bring it down and give me enough clearance to remove that bolt. Um, if I removed the nut for this stiffener bracket right here, probably would not have needed to use that pry bar. All right, so that's the bracket that I was referring to. Didn't take it all the way out, just loosened things up. And now we're gonna remove that nut. I'm using a 24 millimeter 12 point on the nut, counter holding with a T45. And that's out of there. All right, so I'm just gonna slip the arm back in, tack this nut in so it doesn't go anywhere. And then uh, we'll work on getting this attached to the body. Just using this pry bar to get everything uh, lined up properly. All right, so we've got our washer and our nut. Uh, clean side's gonna face the cross member, dirty side's gonna face the nut. Just to put things back the way you found them probably doesn't make a difference at all. I'm gonna come back in with the gun just to snug it down quickly. So E20 wrench to counter hold. 21 mil on the nut. Just walking it in on the lowest torque setting. We're gonna do the final torque um, once we have the weight of the vehicle on the bushings. Um, and it's at the correct ride height so we don't tear the bushings prematurely. I'm just gonna snug this down until I see the joint start spitting and then I'll come in with the counter hold. What am I looking for to verify it's not spinning? I can't see the threads, so I'm just watching the control arm drop into the pocket of the steering knuckle. Uh, when it stops doing that, then it's safe to assume I'm gonna need to counter hold. In this case, it allowed me to snug it the majority of the way um, without even needing to counter hold it, so that's awesome. All right, so normally the next thing I do is tack this bolt in, uh, but what I'm gonna do first, I need to do the upper control arm today. We're gonna make sure that we will have enough clearance um, to retorque the upper control arm bolts, and if not, then I'll remove that strut assembly to give us the clearance that we need. 
All right, so um, long story short, we looked at the landscape up top. We have sufficient space to remove all the bolts and nuts that we need to remove to change the upper control arm. So I am gonna tack the strut assembly back to the uh, lower control arm. All right, so that's tacked in place. This is our bracket for the um, ABS speed sensor and brake wear sensor. Just gonna slip that around our new control arm. So you can see, if you're looking at this over here, the routing for these sensors are actually um, not correct. They should be in the channel. So I'll take that out when I have a moment and route that correctly. But this looks good. And now we're gonna put our sway bar back in place. Just using my pry bar to make sure things are lined up correctly so I don't damage the threads um, of this bolt as I'm sending everything back in. That one both looks and feels a little bit off, so I'm gonna walk this one up a little further. Okay, this side looks and feels better, and it's going right in. All right, so now we're gonna work on removing the upper control arm. All right, so this um, large 32 millimeter nut that retains the upper ball joint. Just gonna loosen that guy up. All right, so uh, looks like I'm gonna have to counter hold now, and grab a wrench to continue. Our counter hold is a T45. All right, so this nut has a pretty thin shoulder. My tool uh, kept slipping off. So I just clamped the upper arm to the knuckle. Just to give me a little more stability. Now we're gonna continue to work on getting that nut off. So I'm just leaving my counter hold braced against the knuckle. Just being mindful of when this lets go. When this lets, when it lets go, I don't wanna hit that fender. All right, so that's out. Once I release this clamp, Okay, so uh, next thing we're gonna do is our counter holds um, for these bolts are under hood. So we'll remove our shrouds and get set up there and then we're gonna remove the bolt here and the other one here. I am loosening uh, these various fasteners for this cowl cover, we'll call it. Just lifting up, pulling it out. This is what I just popped back in place. It kind of loosened itself up. Now I'm going to lift up on the coolant reservoir. Kind of unclip it and move it out of the way. Uh, the reason why I'm unclipping things and removing shrouds uh, is simply because I have a, removing that from there as well. There we are. I have a nut over here for my upper control arm that I need to counter hold um, or remove, I should say. And then in the battery box area, I have another nut that I need to do the same thing with. But I'm just going to start with this nut and then we'll move on to the other one afterwards. So um, I've got this wrench counter holding the bolt head and in the engine bay, I am loosening the 16 millimeter nut for the upper control arm. All right, so that's about all the way loose. So the head of the bolt is hitting the back of the strut. So what I'll do is I'll get in there afterwards and kind of pull the strut forward a little bit and hopefully I'll have enough room to remove the head of that bolt. All right, quite a long bolt. I was able to maneuver that out. Uh, now I'm gonna work on this bolt. The nut for this bolt is in the uh, battery box area. So I'll show you where that counter hold is next. Okay, so things to be mindful of. Um, I am counter holding a nut that's attached to the body and that is a, my positive um, battery pole. So I am going to um, get a non-conductive like a rag or paper towel or something and put it over there just to reduce the chance of me accidentally arcing. Um, if that freaks you out at all, remove the battery. So I've got a medium depth 
16 millimeter uh, socket on a ratchet and then I'm counter holding up top. All right, at this point it feels like it's getting pretty loose. So I'm going to grab my nut. Like I mentioned earlier, if, uh, if you need more space, I could certainly use it right now. Um, just simply remove the battery. All right, so uh, I just caught the nut as it was falling off. So now I'm just fishing the nut out. Similar to the other side, the head is hitting the strut a little bit, so I'm just pulling the strut forward, and then the bolt is out. Now that everything's out of the way, I can remove our control arm assembly. All right, we've got our new control arm here. Just getting this into the body cavity. Fortunately, it's not as easy to line this up as some of the other arms. Just got a brass punch here. I'm just using it to um, line up the control arm as best as I can uh, with the body. All right, that felt good. Now I'm going to come in from behind, send that nut in. All right, nuts all the way in on that side. And now I'm just going to, there we are. I'll get the other side in and then I'll worry about tightening things up. So on this side, it looks as if I'm really not lined up at all, but I'm just going to have to do it by feel. Now I'm pulling the strut assembly towards me to help me walk the bolt in. There we are. Okay, so I am so I was able to guide the head of the nut. I'm sorry, I was able to guide the nut to the head of the bolt. The bolt is walking back on me, so I'm just using light pressure um, on the head of the bolt to keep it in place while I get the nut on there. All right, so the nut is on. All right, so now that the nut and bolt are in place, bring the car up a little bit and uh, we'll get the ball joint tacked in as well. All right, so now I'm getting the uh, upper ball joint in place. This one has a different uh, counter hold. This is a Miley branded joint and the counter hold seems to be a five millimeter hex. So I'm going to grab one of those. So what I'm doing here with my counter hold, I have an extension on it. It's going to help me um, make sure the joint is oriented pretty much straight. It's not cocked, you know, left or right while I try to get the, um, the nut tacked in here. So a lot going on. I'm holding the upper control arm into the knuckle, walking the nut on to tack it in place and I am counter holding it with a six millimeter. So as I'm tightening this, what's great is I'm watching the, definitely gonna have to edit that out. I'm watching the stud of the ball joint and it's not moving at all. So I know that when I do my final torque, I'm not gonna need to counter hold the joint. All right, so the last link I'm concerned with setting up is my uh, stabilizer bar end link. I'm gonna try to move this assembly up uh, and get the end link in place. Now that our end link is back on the steering knuckle, I'm refitting the strut assembly. Okay, so uh, for any position where we have a rubber bushing, they do need to be torqued at the vehicle's ride height. What I've done so that I'm not fighting um, the compression of the coil spring is I remove the lower bolt 
uh, and move the strut assembly off uh, to the side. I've got the steering knuckle um, preloaded and I measured from the lip of the fender um, to the middle of my wheel hub or axle nut. I measured it at 16 inches. That was for this particular car. Every car is gonna be a little bit different. And now I'm going to torque the tension strut and the spring control arm fasteners. And the same procedure that I'm doing here um, applies to the bolts up top. When you're torquing those rubber bushings, um, you wanna make sure that everything is, is preloaded at the vehicle's ride height. So I'm counter holding with um, an E20 wrench on one side. On the other side, I have a 21 millimeter fastener. Um, what you'll notice is I'm at the point now where I no longer need to counter hold, which is great. Uh, this is getting torqued to 90 foot pounds and then an additional 180 degrees. So a lot of torque on this one. That's my 90 foot pounds. So from here, I'm going to uh, just going to do 90 degrees twice. We're now going to rely on the wrench and we're going to do two more 45 degree. That was two more 45 degree sessions to get our full uh, 180 degrees. So this one's torqued. Now we're going to do the same on this one. Doing the same procedure on this side. Uh, the only difference is the E20 is on the torque wrench this time and I'm counter holding with the nut. So that was my 90 Newton meters. And then I'm gonna do my 180 degrees. It's our first 45. It's my second 45. It's my third 45 and the fourth. All right, so these main members are torqued. Uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and start torquing everything else that has a joint on it. Um, to do that, I don't need to have the suspension preloaded so I'm gonna let everything down. All right, so these two nuts need to be torqued to 250 Newton meters. So that's what we're gonna work on now. At that force, unfortunately, the steering knuckle um, it's going to want to turn and lock before I'll be able to apply that 250 Newton meters. It's the first one. It's 250 Newton meters on the second one. All right, so I'm snugging the uh, tie rod down, which requires me to counter hold it. All right, so now that it's snug and no longer moving, uh, I'm gonna torque this one down. All right, so that was our 90 Newton meters. And then we're gonna go an additional uh, 60 degrees. All right, so our tie rod is torqued. Okay, so now I'm torquing the upper ball joint nut. Uh, that's a 32 millimeter nut. I'm torquing it to uh, 50 Newton meters plus an additional 45 degrees. So that's our 50 Newton meters. Oh, hold tight for a moment. That's my additional 45 degrees. All right, so I have a wrench counter holding in the strut tower area and up top. I'm snugging this nut down. Then I have to torque it to uh, 35 Newton meters. And then I believe we're going to go an additional 50 degrees. Okay, so now we're preparing to torque the upper control arm bushings. In order to do so, I'm using a floor jack to get the suspension back to um, that ride height that 16 inches that I referred to earlier between the uh, lip of the fender and the axle bolt. Uh, and then we're gonna torque everything up. All right, so we're dead at 16 inches. Uh, now I'm going to begin the torquing procedure. The spec is 35 Newton meters and then we're gonna go an additional 90 degrees. All 
right, so that just hit at 35 Newton meters. I'm gonna go 45 degrees twice on this one. It's my first 45. It's my second 45. That one's all set. Okay, so I'm snugging things down first. And then similar to the other side, I'll come in with the torque wrench. All right, so that's snug up top. Now I'm gonna set things up with a torque wrench for the, for the final torque. I have a deep 60 millimeter socket and a three inch extension on here. As you can see, there's not much room to work. There we are. That's our 35 Newton meters. And we're gonna try our best. We're gonna get 30, we're gonna get 90 degrees out of this. Just gonna go for one more rotation. That's all set. All right, so I'm gonna move the floor jack as it's no longer needed. We're gonna clip the coolant reservoir back in. So we've got one clip over here in the rear, and then we have two rubber grommets that that floats in, that's in place. Now we're gonna put our cowl back on. Okay, so now that the cowl is snapped back in place, we just have our locking fasteners around the perimeter. That's all locked up. We're done with under the hood. Now we're going to torque our sway bar end link, and we're gonna to torque the strut assembly to the spring control arm, and that's a wrap. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is set up our uh, strut assembly. So it's been off to the side so that we can torque everything. Now we're gonna slide it back onto the control arm. There we are. For this one, we're gonna counter hold with a 24 millimeter and that's 21 mil. All right, so I'm setting this to 100 and 20 newton meters to start. It's 120 newton meters, and then I need to do an additional uh, 180 degrees. It's my first 90. That's my second 90. That's fully torqued. The last thing we're gonna work on is our sway bar end link up top. All right, so I've got my nine millimeter counter hold. I've got my 19 millimeter ratcheting wrench. Just gonna get things snugged down. Okay, now that that's snugged down, I'm gonna come in with the torque wrench, torque that to 110 Newton meters. All right, that's all set. All right, everyone. So we've wrapped up on the front suspension on our 2015 C300. As you can see, a lot required in terms of tools, a lot required in terms of time. So be sure to budget a full afternoon if you're gonna tackle this job. Uh, it's not a particularly hard job, just a little bit of a tedious one. If you have any questions about what you've seen today, 
or if you want to let us know what you'd like to see us do DIYs on on our W205, be sure to leave that in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.